Hello everyone. It's 3 p.m. and our next speaker is Michael Bank from NetApp, who will be talking about Patroni deployment patterns. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Well, great. Uh, you're all coming. Um, I think it's the only Petroni talk, so I'm slightly surprised that it was me I was chosen. Um, Michael Bank, I work for um, NetApp Open Source Services, which is uh, what Predative used to be. So we were open source uh, service and consultancy company that is now part of NetApp. We're still doing open source um, consulting service and support. I'm the Petroni maintainer for Debian, and by definition then also Ubuntu. And um, yeah, and Petroni is, I would say, or let, let's put it this way, like who's using high availability here? Um, not like in an on-premise or VM thing, not as a cloud managed thing. Oh, quite full. Okay, and, and who's using Petroni in that? And who's using something else other than Petroni? Okay, so maybe 15, 20%. I'm not using Petroni, but I think one can say that Petroni seems to be the most um, popular high availability solution for Postgres nowadays. That's out there, at least as a as an open source thing. There's um, there's still Rep Manager around. There's a PG Auto failover, but and there's Pacemaker maybe for for the old school fans. But Petroni is is kind of the the one that that's most widely used. So maybe. As a as a quick overview, it's uh, it's cloud native, yeah, template. It says, but really, project. Um, it was initiated by Zalando. Um, at least as a project, it's based on Compose Governor, which so the, the, originally it was written by Compose, and it was uh, quickly forked by Zalando. Um, it's in Python, and it has an MIT license. So similar to Postgres, but not exactly the same. Um, the, yeah, one of the project founders is, um, now Microsoft. Um, the other one, uh, is, uh, I think at now a time scale and, um, the project co-maintainer still works at Zalando. So, um, yeah, they, um, they, they, uh, built this project mostly at Zalando and it's an, it's a real, an open source project nowadays. So. Just to recap quickly the major features. I mean, it's it's an agent. Um, it does configure your instances. It's a bit, you could say it's a bit of a bot pattern thing. Um, and I think the most important part is that it uses a distributed consensus store for leader election and split brain avoidance. So that's the important part when you do high availability is that you don't have two leaders uh, unless you're, you really uh, want to. And, um, and that you, that you yeah that you have one leader and and only one leader, and that is as um, implemented via distributed configuration store. And on top of that, it it has a REST API for easy configuration, um, health checks, status changes, um, and the Petroni control CLI basically leverages that REST API as a as an endpoint or as a control a command line interface endpoint. You can do multi data center deployments with it. It's a bit, well, it's not non trivial, but it's, it's not totally easy. I will talk about that later. And um, it has a lot of flexibility around replication modes. I'll cover that. Um, it supplies Prometheus metrics these days. It has Citus support. So if you want to run Citus, that's, that's pretty, pretty easy to do along with, with Petroni. And there's also integration or some what's easily integratable, let's say, with backup solutions like PG Backrest, um, Barman, Wally, Wolgi, that kind of stuff. And uh, optionally, you can also use HA Proxy. It has uh, some end service endpoints and, and um, it allows for H easy HA Proxy integration. And also, there's a VIP manager project that allows or offers a um, service, virtual IP service endpoint. For, for that management. I'll come to the way that clients can fail over also a bit later in the talk. Right, so a bit of an overview of the history. Um, so it's like almost nine years ago, um, yeah. 
In 2015, Compo's governor, at least what I can tell, started. And then basically immediately the guys from Zalando started hacking on it, apparently. So, so it filled a niche and they, they used it. And they uh, a couple of months later, they, they forked it as, as the Petroni project, as far as I can tell. And then one year later, the last real Compose commit, I mean, it's still there as a, as a repository. You can look it up. There was like a couple of years later, they changed the README, but that was the, the, the last real code commit was done in 2016. And, and a couple of months later, Petroni 1.0 got released. Well, one thing was the dynamic DCS configuration as other things. Um, I mean, they had a couple of 0.x releases before, but the 1.0 release was in 2016. And then a couple of years later, took a while, Petroni 2.0 that introduced etcd version 3 API. Well, also the other things I'm just cherry picking here and also the, the pure raft implementation. So you don't need an external digital um, distributed configuration store. Well, then we had 2.1, we had uh, the 3.0 release, which introduced such a support and the fail safe mode, which I will also cover later and 3.1, 3.2 over the years. 3.2 was uh, yeah, about a year ago um, with uh, some failover priority. And the 3.3 release, I think was this year, right? So, so I'm kind of, I'm not sure that that doesn't sound right from the, from the timeline, sorry. Um, but I think one, one important part is that in June of this year, the Patroni project moved from the Zalando um, organization to its own organization. So it's now the Patroni organization on GitHub and kind of like a, its own open source project and no longer um, managed, let's say, by, by Zalando, but of course still um, being maintained, co-maintained co by them. And we had a Patroni 4.0 release a couple of weeks ago, I guess, um, with Chrome-based failover and some other things, mostly the, the, the term master was finally removed entirely uh, in favor of primary or leader or something like that. And today we still don't have a logo. So there's no logo, um, but I think people are working on it. So that's the, that's the current status. Um, if, you, if you do, or if you, run, if you wanna run Patroni, there's a couple of deployment possibilities. Uh, you can just run it in, in regular containers. There's the Spilo container by Zalando, which bundles um, all the Postgres major versions along with Patroni and a couple of useful, or a lot of useful extensions and other things. There's the Crunchy container suite and there's Cybercheck Postgres container suite. There's probably a couple of more, which I didn't notice or didn't realize. So if if you have your own like popular container suite, let me know. I'll have amend the slides. And then what's also very um, popular these days is running Patroni and, and Kubernetes with the Kubernetes operator. So as far as I can tell, basically all the major op Kubernetes operators except for Cloud Native PG, which is pretty popular, I have to admit. So maybe 50% Cloud Native PG, 50% the rest. And But all the other ones are all based on Patroni. Um, Zalando operator started first, so they have a whole stack of Patroni, Spilo, Zalando operator, and then there's the Cybertech operator, which I believe is a, is a fork of that, and the Crunchy operator, which is its own implementation, and the Procono operator, which is a fork of the Crunchy operator, and there's Ongres, Stackres, which I think is also its uh, its own implementation. You can also run it on bare metal. You just like pip install it. Um, you have to be a bit careful with all the other stuff. Or there's also the Linux distribution um, packages. So as I mentioned, we, we maintain it in the apt uh, PostgreSQL org repository. Um, and there's uh, Devrim maintains it for, for the RPM um, repositories. So I wrote a blog post on, on, on that a while ago. That's That's been a while. Right. So... If there's any questions, you can just ask or like raise your hand and I'll try to repeat the question just so, so you know during the talk. A bit of an overview of the Patroni architecture. How does it really look like? So you have, uh, well, you have the, the DCS down here, which is, I'm going to get into more detail soon. Um, 
you have uh, Postgres, which is managed by Patroni. Patroni talks to each other via the DCS mostly. And then you have uh, some kind of um, routing from, from a client to, to the leader. These are the, the things that are involved. So one thing you can say is that due to the way you need a DCS, Patroni makes the whole thing a bit more complicated. It's not just Patroni or not just Postgres, but you need a, uh, um, an additional thing. So that certainly increases the um, complexity. There is a couple of implementations. So if you run Patroni on, um, on Kubernetes, you can use a Kubernetes API, and otherwise there is etcd, both the version 2 and the version 3 API. So that's a bit confusing because uh, etcd 3 implements basically both. Uh, maybe the version 2 has been, well, it has been deprecated. I'm not sure whether they removed it in the meantime. Uh, you certainly have to um, specifically ask for it, but it, it's still there, I believe. And then you have console or Zookeeper as popular options. And then there's the PySync object. That's a pure raft implementation. So it's a Python project that then just runs along with uh, Patroni on the same node, uh, which in, in general is a great thing because then you don't need an external mm, distributed configuration store. But uh, on the other end, it turned out that it's really difficult to debug. Um, there were a couple of bugs or problems with it. So it's generally considered deprecated, fortunately, at this point. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, development in that project either. So it's probably not going to, to see a revival, I would say. But anyway, the, um, the DCS, what's, what's it doing? It, it uses the RAF consensus algorithm to um, make sure that changes are done monoatomically and um, distributed, yeah, distributed key value store. These changes are done with uh, these atomic operations so that you can be sure that a change will be there only once. And, and if a Petroni node is querying the DCS, all the nodes will get the same results or re reply. Um, it works the it works that you have a key or the, the, these uh, these keys are, are being written to DCS. So you have a time to live for these keys. And you have the other um, members which watch on these keys and see whether they are being rewritten all the time or whether they're expired, which in this case will lead to a, um, to a new leader election. So that's the, the replicas watch the validity of the leader key and there's a new leader race when the leader key expires. And the primary up, updates the key periodically or like every X seconds in order to make sure. Then the, the one thing you have to be sure then what happens when, yeah, when, when, when a leader can no longer update its key. So if something happens, Petroni will then automatically demote or try to demote uh, the standby, uh, the primary to a standby if it cannot reach the DCS and or, uh, well, if, uh, if it for other, for other reasons, the leader key has expired. The, the point with this, if the DCS is not reachable, that's, um, part of, that's mitigated with the face safe mode. I'll get to that a bit later. But uh, in general, the Patroni will demote to a standby. Um, and another node will then take over. And then you can also use a Vatschlag device uh, in case, the, for example, Patroni is not answering uh, or, or the note is, is uh, not, not happening not not uh, replying for a longer time, so as as an additional fail safe. So how does that um, time to live and the loop thing look in in detail? So you have three parameters basically. You have a time to live. That's um, that's how long the key is valid, and then you have a, a so-called main loop timeout. That's a loop wait. So that um, that's how many how often or how how long Patroni waits for each API for each HA loop. And then during that, it'll update the key. And again, if, if, a, if it cannot reach DCS, there's a retry timeout. So it tries after um, this retry timeout twice, I believe. So in general, um, there's usually you would say, I mean, a regular system you can say is usually time to live would be around 30 seconds. But if you want to have tighter, um, tighter timeouts, you can, you can lower that. 
the, the minimal values are um, 20 for time to live. Is that right? Is it 10? I thought. I'm not sure. Maybe, huh? 20, okay. Um, and then every two seconds for loop weight uh, and the recharge time has to be three. So you have to, basically these days it's enforced that the time to live is, is at least uh, loop weight plus two times the, the recharge timeout. Otherwise it's just set to it. So to to expand it a bit more more detail, you have um, you have the three paternity nodes and the DCS, and the the left one is the current leader, um, paternity one, with the time to live, and it, it as I said, it periodically updates that um, that leader key with its name and uh, gets a success back. But if the leader then is goes away for some reason. The other two, they're still watching, and once the time to live has expired, um, they get a notification that it's that it is expired. At that point, um, they will try to query the other nodes um, and try to get their status. So, in order to figure out what's the best course of action, and if they're both eligible for failover, they will try to set the leader keys themselves and. Um, one of them, and that's the point, right? Uh, due to the at atomicity of the DCS, only one of them will actually manage to update the leader key, and that one is going to be the new leader, and the other one is then following this this um, leader, this new leader. Now, the third one, uh, or the, the one, Patron 1, that's, that's uh, down, that's now, I would say, out of scope of Patroni, if you're, if you're running it with Kubernetes, then I would say the, the operator will, will um, um, purge the, the pod and, and restart it uh, or something. But otherwise, if you're just running it uh, in Docker or so, you will have to restart it yourself and figure out how to, how to recover that node. Once, once you have recovered it and, and uh, Patroni starts up again, it will see that what used to be the leader, it's no longer there. It will run PG Rewind um, by default, or yeah, I'm pretty sure by default these days, and uh, try to reattach it as a new standby. So yeah, you're again at three nodes. So some deployment topologies. Um, in general, you need three, at least three DCS nodes. That's how it works with high availability. Uh, unless otherwise you you get a single point of failure. I mean, you can do it for test deployments, but for production deployments, you should really have um, at least three DCNS nodes. And um, those should also be of an odd number, like three, five, seven, four, for, uh, yeah, it makes sense. And if you don't run the DCS on the same node as Petroni, then you can choose how many Petroni Postgres nodes you want to have. You can do also use one. I mean, that might make sense if you have a lot of Petroni clusters and you have maybe um, only a few single node clusters, and then you might want to still run Petroni on it in order to make it easier for config management or things. So everything looks basically the same. But you need at least two nodes, obviously, for high availability. And I would say three node clusters are pretty typical and, yeah. Um, uh, usually what you what you would use um but if you have a lot of data maybe a two node cluster is, is, uh, is enough if you don't want to waste so much storage and the the dcs can be operated on the same nodes i mean it's it's always a big question whether that's that's good or bad i would say um if well first of all if you're using pure rough then it's by definition um but otherwise um if you have only one or two Petroni clusters, maybe it makes sense to do it like this. If you have a lot of Petroni clusters, I would say a separate DCS is uh, is the better choice. Also, maybe if um, if you already have a team that manages etcd clusters, for example, and you as a DB, Postgres DBA don't want to get involved into that, then it makes sense to do that. Um, otherwise, you can use it. You can operate it as a standalone cluster. So that's that's something we've seen with with our customers quite a bit. That usually we talk to the Postgres DBAs, and they're not necessarily uh, etcd specialists. So you have some new technology to depend on. Maybe you have a team 
to do it, but um, that that might be a problem. Um, so if you can operate it out to to a DCS team, maybe they're running already Zookeeper or console or something, then that's that's maybe the best choice. So if you run a three node cluster with a local DCS, it would look like that. In this case, well, it can can be rough, or it can be uh, no, yeah, it, it would run the rough algorithm there. And um, the Patroni, I mean, the one thing is that usually the DCS also has some some kind of leader, etcd has, but that doesn't doesn't need to be on the same node as uh, Patroni. So by the way, I already uploaded the slides to the conference system, so you can just get them from there if you want. And well, if if you're on pure raft, it would look like that. But again, it's it's a bit deprecated, so maybe not the easiest way. You can, by the way, you can also if you um, if you don't want to run three Postgres systems in this thing, you can just run a third node which only has um, Patroni and the and the raft implementation running on it. So you don't need um, no need the Postgres there. That's that's possible. And then I think. What what's useful is is a three node standalone cluster, and then you can have one or two or three um, Postgres nodes. Yeah, that's that's the the one that's the I would say preferred way these days to to run Patroni for for most installations. Certainly, if you have a lot of Patroni clusters, and then again you can have one with a local Daft. Okay, I will. Any questions so far about that? Is there a question? Yeah. Wait, maybe wait for the microphone because I can't hear you, Rella. Okay. No. Well, he has a microphone, but it's not on. Okay, the other one. Hello. Yes. Uh, when you talk about leader, do you talk about Tron leader or? PostgreSQL leader, or is it bomb? So in this case, it's a Postgres leader. Patroni doesn't really uh, have a leader. Um, every node or every Patroni process manages their own node. And well, if the local node is the Postgres leader, then you could say it's the Patroni leader. But there is no notion of a leader in, in, in that sense. And Patroni is only really managing Postgres and talking to the DCS. It knows it's the leader. Uh, it knows its local node is the leader, I would say, but it, it's not a leader in that sense that it's uh, the other ones are replicating from it or something. So it monitors all Postgres instances. Each each Patroni node monitors all if each Postgres nodes. Each Patroni node manages the local Postgres node, and then they uh, Patroni talks to the DCS in order to figure out the general cluster configuration store. Yeah, but how do, how do you know if a Patroni is uh, an LT of the PostgreSQL is an LT? If uh, Patroni crashes, uh, does it trigger the PostgreSQL reconfiguration? Does it, sorry, what? If uh, Patroni crashes, yeah. does it trigger a change in the PostgreSQL topology? Yeah, that's, so if Patroni cr crashes, that's, um, that's a problem in the sense either you you have to make sure that it's being restarted by system control or by Docker or by, by I don't know um, Kubernetes. Um, if it's not being restarted, then that would be a problem because uh, the the leader um, wouldn't know that it's not actually the leader as far as the DCS is confirmed. Right? If Patroni crashes, then it cannot update the leader key, and another node will then acquire the leader key, and then in that case, you would have two. Um, Postgres leaders. Um, what you can do is either you can use the watchdog um, feature, I guess, for that. In, in that case, to make sure that the, that that node is then switched off, I believe. Or um, yeah, you have to make sure that Patroni Patroni runs. Yeah, right. So right, I'm I'm getting uh, so so yeah. So Alexander said there's also HA proxy, which and basically it means like if you do. Um, if you do it via HA um, proxy, you do client load balancing, let's say, in that case, HA proxy would realize that the Patroni REST API is no longer there and um, would then not route uh, traffic there anymore. So 
that's another case for HA proxy. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. I. Ah, yeah. I have uh, another question about uh, retaking leadership uh, by uh, Postgres uh, instance. Uh, how exactly does it happen? Uh, I mean, what happens with uh, the, the active connections to uh, to the node uh, which was uh, in uh, uh, standby mode and uh, suddenly retakes uh, leadership? So the connections that were on a standby node, they don't see anything, I would say. I think the main problem is that all the connections that were on the leader node, they will get um, they will get canceled if Petroni either when it goes down and um, puts it into standby um, or just goes away uh, if you if you then run the the watchdog. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so okay, so your point is if you are, if you have HA proxy and in the, it's like a follow up question to the before, right? If you um, if the leader goes down, HA proxy sends new connections to the to the new leader. But what's about the current connections? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I mean uh, if uh, there are some connections redirected to standbys uh, for reading, for example, and uh, standby comes to a leader. So, if, so promoting in Postgres does not do a restart or something. It's just, it's just promoting. So those connections would, I mean, if they read only connections, they would just continue working. Mm -hmm. They just don't know that in principle they could also write if they want. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, some bit further. Features or, or points from from Petroni to to review. So first of all, you have the Petroni control uh, command line interface. It talks to the REST API. I mentioned it already. Um, it's um, you can use it to to yeah basically uh, initiate switchovers. I think you can do client restarts for it. For example, if you do minor version upgrades, you can um, change the cluster configuration, so the dynamic cluster configuration. So these changes will be replicated to all nodes. So you only have to do it once. And you can also put it into maintenance mode, so pause and, and resume. And you have this list command, which gives you an overview of um, the clusters, or the members, um, the IP addresses, and um, the roles. So leader is, is the leader, the other ones are replicas. And you also see whether they are just running or actually streaming. And you see the timeline, the the node is on, and how much lag in megabytes they currently have. This, so this is getting um, updated every um, HA loop, I believe. Right. So we a bit more about about clients failover. Um, yeah. What, what happens if you do a switch or failover? The clients need to reconnect or connect to the new leader. So there's basically three options here. So HA proxy can use the REST API, it's it's pretty nice. There's some integration there. You also wrote a blog post. Um, basically, you can, there's a, there's some API, API endpoints and you can ask them and you'll get an HTTP response. Uh, you can ask, are you a leader? And it will either give you a 200 if it is or or not if, it, if it's not. And then REST, uh, HA proxy can figure out which one is the leader or which one are the read-only standbys and can route traffic accordingly. There's also the VIP manager project that's uh, configuring uh, a virtual IP address. Uh, it calls DCS. Um, it only works with etcd and console. There's, a, there's the old version, VIP manager um, 1, which only supports the version 2 API. And there's the VIP manager um, 2, that's the current one, that only supports the v3 API. The main, I mean, that sounds nice in general, but the main um, problem I see is that as soon as the DCS goes down, VIP manager is really quite strict in removing the, the service endpoint. And then basically, you know, that's, that's a downtime as far as the application is concerned because the IP went down. And um, I'll, I'll get to the, to the fail safe mode a bit later. So Petroni is these days more resilient to DCS outages 
and that makes VIP manager, in my opinion, not the greatest. Um, yeah, it, I mean, the VIP manager is, is not as useful these days as it was before, I would say. And then finally, you can have client-based uh, failover. So you can just tell the client, these are my uh, hosts, and please use the, the primary. Um, main problem there is that if you if you regroup the cluster, if you add nodes or something, then you might have to reconfigure the, the client all the time. So and and the other point, as mentioned before, if if the if Patroni is down for one, um, this this wouldn't necessarily figure it out. So it would still possibly um, try to connect to the old primary, but but this this works both for libqq and pgjdbc. You just sell it to target session address primary. Patroni also has so-called tags, so you can actually, um, oh, there's a question, yeah. Question is, are you familiar with the latest uh, developments of proxy SQL and what it supports? Pro is that a Percona project? Or which one is no. it? It's I'm not, uh, no, I'm not super familiar. Is it, so, can you can you summarize in one sentence? Is it uh, working with Patroni? Okay, so it speaks uh, SQL pro protocol, so it knows what what the primary is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As I may could put it as a as a third uh, part here, but it doesn't talk to the Patroni API. It just it, it's internal. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good good to know. Right. Oh, another question, yeah. Hello, and thanks for sharing those information. So I had a question regarding the client-based failover. So you said that in some cases he will basically stick with the whatever old primary he was connected to, and I wanted to get a bit more insight. Was that because of the libq implementation or it was because of how Patroni handles the failover, or can you uh, share more about that? Yeah, no, this was specifically for the case in, in case Patroni dies and um, isn't restarted or is not working, which is basically really rare. Yeah, so I have to say, uh, I haven't mentioned it before, but Patroni has a very good test suite, and I haven't seen it actually die. And maybe we can have a call. Anybody saw Patroni die in production? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it it's pretty it's pretty robust, but but in the possible case that the Padroni dies and you it doesn't restart and you don't have a watchdog, then you would have the problem that Postgres might still be running, another node might be um, promoted, and then this client based failover would not realize that you have two primaries and possibly still connect to to the old primary. I think that's a pretty patch case, but something to keep in mind, yeah. Um, I have a question regarding failover. For example, if a primary became a replica, but what happens with all existing connections? Because uh, all of them will try, for example, I try to do insert, it fails. I try to do, does it to drop these connections or should be done on the client side? So so while if you promote that's in Postgres, that's quick and it's just in place and it works. If you do a demote, Postgres doesn't have a PG control demote command. So what you have to do is you have to shut down Postgres, put it into standby mode and then start it again, which is what Patroni does, which then also means all connections will be cut. So in this case, so if Patroni can demote it, that's fine. Like you have no trouble there. So for example, if you're running in a VM or in a container and it didn't get CPU, time for a while and it just couldn't update the, the leader key or it was overloaded for whatever reason. Um, and then it, it gets CPU again and realizes, oh, I'm not the leader anymore. Then Patroni would shut down Postgres and start it again in standby mode to be safe. So this is not, not a problem. There's another question in the back. Hi, um, we've seen almost that exact problem um, running a connection cooler on the Patroni nodes because Petroni doesn't restart that. So we had clients who maintained their connection to the connection pooler. 
see read write sessions go read only. So it can happen. Yeah, so that, that was kind of like, but that was a question, right? That was a comment, or the question. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. So maybe moving on. There is a couple of configuration checks, and you can set those per no. Oh, sorry, there's another question, yeah. Uh, are there any plans to support multi-master? Uh, I don't think so, because multi-master, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to a bit about, uh, Petroni supports logical replication to some degree. Um, it, it manages the slots, let's say, but uh, multi-master inherently is a, is a logical, rep so maybe I didn't mention it in the beginning, or maybe I put it on slide and didn't, didn't say it explicitly, but post, Petroni uses physical replication for, for that replication. And in multi-master, inherently, you need logical replication. So at least right now, Petroni is not managing logical replication as a replication thing. So uh, it could be on the roadmap, maybe, but I wouldn't I wouldn't hold my breath. And certainly, of course, multi-master as, as is doesn't exist right now in, in, in open source Postgres. So that would be there would need to be some more uh, other some other things like conflict resolution, DDL replication, all that stuff. To to actually make replication with logical or with multi master useful, I would say so. Because I I would guess if Petroni supports it, but then you get so many bug reports that oh my my replication broke, but it's somebody didn't use multi master properly. You have to be very careful, I guess. And I yeah I can't speak for the Petroni people, and I don't know. Yeah. I would say it's not coming very soon. Let's put it this way, and and probably Postgres will have to have it first in a in a robust way before it, before it's um, implemented. Good. So, replication tags quickly. Um, you can use those to to um, change the the characteristics of a single node of a particular node. So um, that that's useful if you, for example, have a topology where one node is in a different um data center or is in a different availability zone or something or you want to have one node that's actually for example the last one node stream which is pretty recent so that just makes lock shipping then it doesn't try to make um, stream replication it just um does the uh, archive recovery on this node so you have to set you have to have this set up of course but in this case it does you can add a failover priority um also i think since three to two or something um, where you say, okay, this node should, because it's maybe closer, this one should be a failover target and not the other one, which is maybe just for, for disaster um, recovery. And you can use clone from to, in order to, to tell uh, new nodes, please clone from this node and not necessarily the leader in order to, to get less, less load on the leader. Same with, for example, no load balance, you can say then in this case, uh, Read only queries would not if you're using HA proxy, this node would not be in the in the read only part of the HA proxy configuration. And again, those can be set for individual nodes. Um, that's in the individual nodes uh, configuration. And then one some words about uh, replication modes, particular synchronous replication because that's pretty popular. Uh, so per default, it uses asynchronous physical replication, as I just mentioned. But you can do synchronous replication as well, and it has basically three, well, yeah, three nodes. Modes um, you can you you have to set synchronous mode uh, to true. Um, then then it does synchronous replication. You can in that case in this case it it works. Uh, that um, if all, if you, for example, only have two nodes and you have synchronous replication and the, the standby goes down, then that's a big problem, right? Because uh, usually in this case, the, the leader would no longer um, acknowledge commits because they cannot put them on the standby. And in this case, the Troni would then fall back to asynchronous replication in order to have uh, availability. If you really prefer to say, okay, I need to really have synchronous replication and you can use synchronous mode strict, in which case Petroni will then 
absolutely make sure that it's committed to um, usually one synchronous standby, but there's a synchronous node count parameter. So you can also say, for example, two or more. And um, since version four, so a couple of weeks ago, again, you can also have the synchronous, you can put quorum as synchronous mode. And then it will use the quorum commit feature that's been there since Postgres, well, for a while, but uh, in any way, uh, it will then, for example, uh, if you have four nodes, you could say, um, please put it in, on at least two of them. And then uh, it will it will only, you don't need to specify uh, very specific stuff, but it will check and say, okay, it needs to be um, synchronous on, on at least two nodes or committed to two nodes of the three. And then that's an easy way to, to implement synchronous uh, quorum commit. It also does um, replication slot management. So it it automatically uh, creates a slot for all the, the, the nodes, uh, unless you do use uh, slots false. And it um, you can have further slots, either logical or physical. And you can also say ignore slots. So the syntax is slightly different. So you have to be a bit careful. Um, nowadays, one, one problem used to be that when, when a Petroni node was going away, the slot was also um, removed, I think, pretty pretty quickly. But uh, yeah. now there is a time to live, member slots time to live, which is 30 minutes by default. So it will wait at least 30 minutes for the node to come back before it um, removes the slot again. And you can also uh, add these logical slots. They're also managed. So you, you have the, um, yeah, you, you have to register them, but then you have done some slot management in a sense that you uh, you get some replication position advancement and in principle can then still lose uh, use logical replication from the new standby uh, after after a switch over so there's also just very quickly re replication trade options i'll just go over that but you can Use, for example, PG Backrest to bootstrap a new replica from backup. So you don't need to have a PG based backup. Uh, just want some words on, on multi data center deployments before um, time is over. There's basically, um, yeah, you can have multi region, multi data center, multi availability zone. That's uh, what you can do. And you have basically two ways to do that. You can have a single Petroni cluster stretch over multiple data centers. Um, then you would have automatic failover there. And you can use synchronous replication for that if you want. Or you have separate um, Postgres, uh, sorry, separate Petroni clusters in separate data centers. And then you need manual failover and no synchronous replication. But that's pretty well explained in the uh, Petroni documentation. I'll just get through it. So if, you, if, it's a, if it's a single Petroni cluster, you should make sure that the, the latency is not too bad between them. And um, yeah, it, usually so etcd, for example, doesn't really like it. If it's a high latency link between them, they might have to adjust the timeouts and stuff. But in principle, you can do it. Um, and if you really need automatic failover, then you should have three data centers, which usually the, the customers say, yeah, we need multi data center, but we only have two. And that's not really easily workable in this this way, and um, and you need then at least one DCS node per data center, but one data center can can just again be witness where you just have etcd for example running but not necessarily Petroni, so you need a third site basically, and that would look like this, with uh, three data centers, and we again the the third data center could just be the DCS, and then. Uh, the other one is um, multiple Petroni clusters. So that's the standby cluster feature. So you have a secondary data center that's that's running its own DCS. Um, and then basically you have to configure this. Uh, it makes sense to have that maybe on, on both sides. You have a standby cluster where you tell the you tell it the connection details to connect to the primary data center and uh, it needs a primary slot name. So you then should probably uh, configure one for DC1 and one for DC2 in a head. And um, failover or switchover then looks like you just have to remove the standby cluster part of the 
configuration with uh, Petroni Control Edit Config, for example, or the API, um, and, and add it to the other one. Um, yeah, you must just be sure if you do that, that the old standby, well, or if you added it, add it to the other one. Yeah, generally you must be sure that the other cluster is no longer the primary, I would say. Then there's no inter good integration here on the Patroni side because there's two different Patroni clusters and they don't really know each other. There has been some work, um, I believe, especially by Cybertech to make it easier to work on that stuff, but that hasn't been, let's say, released so far as far as, far as I know. So that's certainly something that could be improved uh, in the future. So. This would then look like this. You have a left, you have the primary cluster. And um, there's some one replication. So so the, from the one leader to the standby leader, you have asynchronous replication, but you don't need to replicate to all of them because there's cascading replication then from the standby leader to the other ones. And every each of them have their, has their own DCS. And just one or two minutes for some points about yeah, sorry, that's a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of what do you mean database as a service? I mean, I do No, I don't think that would work because Petroni wants to wants to manage Postgres and um, it really needs to run locally and it really wants to start the process. So. I mean, I guess there is some database as a service parts that use Petroni under the hood. Maybe Azure actually does. I don't know. Um, but you cannot do it as a customer. Yeah, you can run your own Petroni and, and use the database as a server. It needs to be baked in by the service provider. Inherently, I'm afraid. Yeah. Right. So uh, one one other word about um, the failsafe mode because one one really big problem with Patroni was uh, the DCS goes down or maybe etcd was not happy with something and did a leader election and and then um, Patroni would pretty easily demote the leader until DCS is available again and people were getting annoyed because uh, their application had a downtime. So what since version three um, we now. Um, well, actually, this this slide. Sorry, let's let's just come um, go on this. So, since since version three, you can just uh, there's a failsafe key that you can use. The only thing you have to actually do is failsafe mode true. That that's what you have to configure. And then, if the DCS is not available, the leader will query the REST API of all the other Patroni members. And if they all answer, it assumes that everything's okay. It's just the DCS that's not there, and it will go on. You see. Um, oops, you had error communicating with DCS and got response from the other two. Continue to run as leader because face safe mode is, uh, is enabled and all members are accessible. So that's that's uh, one good uh, way to, to make sure that Patroni is still running. Again, it doesn't help if VIP manager deconfigures the service IP. So in this case, I think VIP manager is not a good solution, at least currently. But but this makes it much easier to run Patroni with a sketchy etcd or Kubernetes APIs or something. And generally, yeah, etcd is is pretty sensitive to resource starvation, so it's always a good idea. If it's I think for real production workloads, you have to be really careful to run it on the Postgres nodes locally. Uh, at least then get some dedicated storage device and and network device if if possible. And also one thing we've noticed. Um, and I think the current, at least the current Docker Petroni uh, example config does it. You should really put um, etcd auto compaction retention on because otherwise, yeah, I think there's just like one gigabyte of default wall space. And for some reason, Petroni, um, we've seen that a couple of customers that Petroni was using all of that. And then etcd was not no longer working, which is also an outage usually. So, okay, I think. Yeah, we is there any other questions? Because otherwise we we're done. Okay, so if there's any more questions, sign me out. Thanks. Thanks.